Welcome back to the Racing Dudes YouTube channel where today I will be previewing the G1 Acorn Stakes this Friday, June 9th. Will it be ran Friday? Will they move it to Sunday or Monday? Time will only tell due to the air quality because of the fires in Canada. But anyways, in this race we have eight girls going a mile and 16th around the dirt track at Belmont. This is the first time that they are going the extra furlong. Every year in the past it was ran at a mile. I'm pretty sure it was trying to get some of these Oaks contenders in this race and surprisingly we only got two but it did interest the winner of the Kentucky Oaks to enter this race. We are going to start off with the number one, that is Dorth Vader. She got her way into the Kentucky Oaks by winning the Devona Dale. She did end up getting fifth in the Kentucky Oaks, so it shows that she can run outside of the Florida circuit. She does have some early speed, but she will not be the fastest one in the group. Um, but just like her Devona Dale win, she doesn't need the lead to win a race. She does switch up to George Weaver Barn and gets Johnny V aboard. So that could be a plus for Dorth Bader. The number two is Randomized for Chad Brown. Very lightly raced three-year-old who just broke her maiden in March in a maiden special weight. She won it pretty easily, but she is stepping into deeper waters and is going a bit further for the first time. Now, she was purchased at $420,000. So there's some expectations. Chad Brown also wouldn't throw a horse into a G1 if he didn't have some kind of confidence in her. She ran a 92 buyer last time out. So comparatively, she is uh, tied with a high buyer just with the Kentucky Oaks winner, pretty mischievous. She has also a ton of early speed. So it may end up being a speed duel in this race. The number three is Frosty O'Toole for Todd Pletcher. She had back-to-back -back wins at Tampa this winter, then Todd threw in the Gazelle Sticks where she finished in last place. Now, she's had some time off. I'm sure she has matured a little bit, gets the cut back in distance, so that can only help him putting her in here, knowing who would show up in this race is a little bit encouraging for her. The number four is a Colt, the second filly in here for Chad Brown. This one has a bit of a back class winning the Basanda Stakes. She then went to the Gazelle where she came up short. Now this one was actually purchased at $625,000, so there's even more expectations. Her top buyer is a 78, so and that took back uh, back in January. She's going to want a stalking pace, so if it turned into a speed duel, she may actually take advantage of this pace. The number five is Money's Gold, second for Todd Pletcher in here. Now she is the nine to five favorite, and for a good reason. She has popped in over 100 fire two times in her career already, and she is three for four. Todd put her in the eight bells on Oaks Day, and she ended up losing to Red Carpet Ready. She has the ability to take this field gate to wire, but the distance concerns me a little bit. She's never gone past seven furlongs, so she may tire out in the stretch, and at nine to five, I'm just not sure if I can trust her. The number six is your Kentucky Oaks winner, Pretty Mischievous. She has gone five for seven lifetime. She has a speed, she's very versatile, and she's one on and off the pace. She's two for four at this distance as well. The one thing that makes me question is last week at Santa Anita, the Alice look didn't look great at all. She was within a length of Pretty Mischievous in the Kentucky Oaks. So was the Oaks a weak field this year, or was that just a really bad race for the Alice look? She will not be on the front end, so she's going to have to rely on her stocking pace to pick up the pieces in the stretch. The number seven is Good Girl Bad Habit. She is undefeated in her two starts at Laurel Park this spring. She won by 10 links and then she won by 12 links, so she was definitely better than the company she was facing in Maryland. Both times she walked her foes around the track. This is a little bit longer of a trip for her. I also want to mention that her trainer, Brittany Russell, is winning at 28% this year, so she definitely thinks that this horse has what it takes to be here. I just wonder if her and Money's Gold are going to link up and have a pace meltdown. The last horse is a seed, the third for Chad Brown in here. He's really trying to get this third win in this race um, with almost half the field in here. She has also only raced two times. She broke her maiden at Gulfstream Park and then ended up getting third in the eight bells behind Money's Gold. Her buyers are competitive with some of the field and she does like to stalk and her having the outside post, it seems to fit her here. In the eight bells, she was gaining, but she ran out of room. So the longer distance may suit her. So with all of that said, I'm going to go with the number eight, a seed. She's lightly raced. She's progressing each time out. I think that the add is distance will help her, not to mention she is eight to one odds right now. I think that this is going to be a very fast race and on the front end, I think they're gonna tire in the stretch. So underneath an exacta box, I'm going to add in Pretty Mischievous and then add in one of the speed horses in case they do go wire to wire and that's gonna be Good Girl, Bad Habits. 
So that will be a six, seven, eight exacta box. And I can't ignore money's gold. So in a try box, I'm going to put five, six, seven, eight. Now, if you want to do a super, you can add in Dorothy Vader because who the heck knows with the new trainer, with the new rider, she could shock everybody here. So thanks for tuning in to the Racing Dudes YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribed because we will have the Belmont Betting Bible going out soon. Not to mention, we will have live coverage of the Belmont Stakes this Saturday. Make sure you like this video, comment below who you think is going to win this race. And until next week, good luck. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track across the country. We're ramping up for the 2023 Kentucky Derby, and we want you to join us in the fun. Subscribe to Racing Dudes' YouTube channel, like click the notification bell so you never miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.